This is the screencast of uh, chat lobby application developed over Gamuga framework uh, using its uh, JavaScript libraries. This is the main, uh, this is the uh, downloaded SDK. This is the extracted folder which contains the SDK. Uh, and uh, this is the main application folder. It contains two directories, uh, Gamlet and HTML. Gamlet contains the backend uh, Lua scripts which uh, receive and process messages. Room.lua handles uh, room messages and contains room callback. Session.lua handles session messages and contains uh, session callbacks. HTML is the main uh, front-end application. Uh, Index.html contains the basic skeleton of the application. You can just check it. So this is all the front-end. There currently there is no scripting. Uh, there is no script tag uh, in index.html. It's uh, basically this uh, static HTML. So since we are doing a JavaScript based application, you will need to copy uh, these two files uh, from the API folder in the SDK. I have already done that. So now let's start the development. Let's include uh, gameover.js into the, into the HTML. So and let's initialize Gameover client. First argument is the uh, URL to sock bridge.swf since it's in the same folder, we just pass in dot slash. And the second argument is the uh, callback function to be called on in it. So the constructor to Gamuga client text is one argument uh, which is optional. Uh, you can pass in the uh, IP or domain name of the development server. In production, you can omit this argument. It will look something like this. So, we add a on connect callback, which is called uh, as soon as the client is connected to the backend. So, now we connect to room. Connect to room takes two arguments the app ID and the app URL. Since we are connecting to the product development server, we pass in dummy values, but uh, once you are connecting to production, uh, you will need to replace them with the Gamlet uh, app ID and app UID that you find in the Gamlet dashboard, which you can get after uploading the Gamlet to the Gamuga website. So uh, this is basically this is the this is a minimum viable client which uh, can connects to uh, the development server and fires the on connect callback on uh, connection. So let's run the development server now and test this. So before running the development server, make sure you install Unity Python from here within the dev server folder. So I have already done that. So let's start the development server. Numuga.py takes uh, one argument, which is the first argument is uh, the path to the gamlet folder. The second argument is if you if you need a directory to be statically served by HTTP server, you can pass that directory as the second argument. So secondly, we want uh, files in HTML folder to be served, hence we pass in that as the second argument. So the development server is now running. So let's go to localhost colon ten thousand. So we are now connected to the development server. You can see here uh, API connect to room call and then coming connection, then joining room. So now let's respond to the connection on the server side uh, by adding a callback over here. The callback function receives uh, one argument which is the connection ID. Uh, it is used as a handler to the user to identify the user who is connecting to the uh, to the room. So to send in and uh, receive messages we use this ID as the identifier uh, of the user. So let's do a simple print message over here. So this is a simple print message. Let's restart the development server and refresh this page. So we connected and you can see 
connect from the connection ID. So this callback has been called. Now let's send some message from the front end to the back end and also handle it in the back end. So what we're doing uh, on connect now is uh, changing the status uh, text of the status div tag to connected and picking a random number and sending it as the uh, uh, sending it along with uh, my nick message we're sending a my nick message uh, with a random user id basically uh, in real applications you might want to send any real user id or a first name or any other data that you would require on the server side for further processing so this is the demo we have we are using random user IDs. So now let's handle this mining on the server side. So just add a gameoga dot on connect on message uh, callback for mining type of messages. So whenever a mining uh, message is received, uh, this callback is executed. The first argument is a connection ID for uh, identifying the user from which the message is received, and the second argument is the data that you send from the client so basically this this part goes in here so we receive whatever we sent on the client side on the server side as the second document so now we say So this is a simple print statement that we are adding. So let's restart the development server now. And refresh this page. So the status has changed to connected. And we must have sent a mining message which is received here. Got mining from user with connection ID. So now let's make this a bit useful to populate the online users uh, list over here. So, what we do is, so we create two global variables which store the online users, connection ID map and uh, online user list. So we change this uh, in on, on connect, what we do is now uh, send a message of type user list to the connected user to the user who just connected and we send him the uh, online user list as a payload to the uh, as a payload of the user list message and once we receive a mining message it, indi it indicates a user has sent us his nickname now we broadcast it to all the users with a user join message we broadcast the nickname of the user who just joined we also fill in a few, ta a few uh, variables uh, to keep track of the users who have joined so now let's we are basically sending two messages uh, two types of messages user list and user join from the server side let's handle them on the client side now so these are the two messages uh, once so as soon as we receive a user join message we are going to populate uh, we are going to create a table row in this table uh, with uh, nick at the uh, table element basically so the data that you see over here is the data that you send from here so along with the user join type message we are sending the nick so the data that you get here is the nickname of the user who joined and uh, as soon as we connect we receive a user list message which is received over here in user list message for we receive an array of uh, basically a dictionary of online users in, in OL so we send the ol is equal to online user list so for each of the user we fill in the table row of online user list now let's restart the dolphin server and see what happens so we are now connected and uh, this is the online user we received so let's see what are the messages we have received so Gemuga emits uh, console logs when you are connected to development server so Gemuga connected Gemuga sending message mining and user underscore uh, uh, the random number and then it received a message user list and then OL is basically 
there was there was nobody at this at the point this message was being sent and then we get a user join message of this user so uh, user list is a response to the connect event so as soon as we connect we are sending a user list message at this point uh, nothing is there in this array so we get a empty array over here and uh, when we send a minic the response to this minic is uh, this message the user join message which is broadcasted to all the connected users so that is what we get here the nickname of the user who just joined so let's open this link in another browser so now you can see two users the first one is uh, what we have gotten already the second one is the new user uh, so you see that new message has been received because of uh, gamova.broadcast in room.lua so this uh, user join message is sent to all the users who are connected. So you can see the messages received here. So in in this case, the user list, the user list contains a user because by the time this user joined, there was already another user who is already joined. So you have OL and the username, and the current user who joined is sent as a user join message. So that's it for the user join and filling in now let's add the chat part so so this send message function basically sends a message of type chat to the backend uh, so the send message is executed whenever you submit this form uh, which contains an input box uh, this input box so it sends a message of type chat to the backend let's handle that message now on the backend so whenever we get this message we are broadcasting uh, to all the users a message of type chat with a dictionary uh, containing f and c f is basically the nickname and c is basically the chat message that is received so this uh, this message over here is the value in the input box which is received on the server side in this uh, variable so f is connection id map of connection id here we store connection id map of connection id as the nickname of the user so the user who sent uh, this will basically be the nickname of the user who sent this message and sees the data uh, the chat message so let's save it and restart development server and see what happens So these are the messages received so you can see we are sending a message of type chat and we are receiving a message of type chat and the username oh, okay we we are not handling the message of type chat on the client side let's add that right now so we are receiving the chat message on the client side but we didn't handle it so we'll add it right right away so uh, on message of chat we add a div tag to the chat div that we have over here uh, with the user who sent it and the chat message itself so just let's refresh it so you get this let's open another tab and see So you can see the messages are being received by both the users. Also, uh, the online users list is not being cleaned up right now. This is because we are not handling disconnects on the client side, on the server side, and uh, cleaning up our uh, online user list. So let's do that now. The chat part is basically done. You can see the chat messages being sent and received by both the users, uh, along with the console logs. So let's add uh, disconnect support. So uh, this is the disconnect part uh, function. Uh, the callback that is called gets one argument, which uh, which is the connection ID of the user who disconnected just now. So we are cleaning up what we have done over here. So we are cleaning up the online user list uh, and also sending a user gone message to the client side. 
with the nick of the user who just is connected and then i will clean with the connection id map now let's handle the user gone message on the client side So this is it. Uh, as soon as we get a user gone message, uh, this data part is actually the nickname that we are sending from here. So we are removing the TR that we added over here and here of the user, basically indicating that he's uh, gone away from the chat room, or the lobby. So now let's restart the client server and see if it works. Is so we connected. So we totally have six tabs, uh, so we should be seeing six users. So you can see six users joined and so all of them receive all the messages, all the chat messages. So now let's start disconnecting users. I close this. So you can see that the users are getting disconnected. So the disconnect is also working fine. If you can see the consoles, you will see a bunch of uh, user gone messages. So these are the user gone messages for the three users that have disconnected. Let me also disconnect this user. So you see one more user gone message. That's it. Now we have a simple, very simple chat lobby working uh, over GameOS framework. I will we'll put up another screencast on how to deploy the lobby application on, onto the production servers. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.